Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In our previous videos, we talked about a few very important aircraft designs like the lifting body design and the flying wing. If you haven't checked those videos yet, the links are in the description below. In this video, we are going to talk about another wing design called the blended wing. In this design, the shape of the aircraft fuselage is changed so that it can contribute towards lift. The fuselage and wing are blended together so that we have a single lifting body. This design is a combination of the lifting body and flying wing aircraft. The first blended wing aircraft was made in 1920. It was called the Westland Dreadnought. It was designed to be a mail delivery aeroplane. So the main emphasis was on fuel savings. But the aircraft crashed in its first flight in 1924, severely injuring its test pilot and the project was cancelled. In the early 80s, NASA's Langley Research Center decided to do a study on different aircraft designs to increase the passenger capacity without changing its dimensions. This led to the design of modern blended wing aircraft. The increased lifting area of the blended wing allowed for better fuel economy than conventional aircraft designs as their lift to drag ratio is much better than conventional aircrafts. The prototype was designed by NASA in collaboration with Boeing for a subsonic aircraft which was capable of carrying 800 passengers over 13,000 kilometers at Mach 0.85. The aircraft went through many design changes before finalizing on one. The initial prototype had an elliptical fuselage with vertical stabilizers and extremely wide wings. The engines were mounted on the wings, but this caused excessive stress on the wing. To counter this problem, the engines were moved to the aft of the fuselage to obtain better balance. Locating the engines here also increased the efficiency as it reduced the drag caused by the engines to an extent. To accommodate the engines at this location, the rudders had to be moved to the wings. There were challenges in pressurizing the cabin as an elliptical shape was much weaker than a cylinder. To counter this, the fuselage was made of cylindrical vessels to withstand the high pressure. Further wind tunnel testing revealed that the aircraft had control issues at low velocities. So the shape of the fuselage was changed to address the problem. The blended wing design was an absolute win over conventional aircraft models. A comparison study between an Airbus A380 and an experimental blended wing design of similar passenger capacity was made. It was found that the blended wing designs had much better efficiency and maximum takeoff weight than the conventional aircrafts. Considering that both the aircrafts are using similar engines of same thrust value, the conventional aircraft will require more engines than the blended wing concept. In spite of its many advantages, the blended wing concept is not really embraced in the airline market. While the aerodynamics make them very appealing to design and build, there are several added concerns that, when combined together, deter further development of civilian transport in this configuration. First is the emergency evacuation. The biggest drawback to large-scale blended wings is that they have fewer surfaces available to construct walk-in entry and egress doors, which makes it difficult to evacuate the aircraft quickly in an emergency situation. The A380 can evacuate a total of 700 people in a few minutes, but the fuselage also accommodates about 16 emergency exits equipped with escape slides slash rafts to do this. Set number of exits are not possible on a blended wing, making it more difficult and dangerous to conduct an evacuation in an emergency. The second drawback is the ease of maintenance. Conventional airliners have their engines and systems in places which can be easily accessed. On a blended wing, these systems are buried deep into the structure where they are not readily accessible. The final major drawback is airport infrastructure. Flying wings are going to have very large wingspans, which push the dimensional limits of existing runways, taxiways, ramp aprons, terminal gates, etc., placing limits on routes to airports which can accommodate these aircraft. This has a direct effect on operational flexibility for the airlines looking to maximize optimal routes. Currently, there is only one operational blended wing in the world. It is the B-1 Lancer. This aircraft was developed in the late 60s when the US Air Force put up a contract for an aircraft capable of carrying 22,500 kgs of bombs at supersonic speeds and also have a good degree of control at low subsonic speeds. To meet all these requirements, the B-1 Lancer was developed with a partial blended wing with variable swept wings. The blended wing was chosen to accommodate the payload of bombs and also have a stable flight at both supersonic and subsonic speeds. Well, that's it guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video. We will meet again in the next one. Until then, bye.